progress. Human cultural traditions uh, have a cumulative quality that each generation builds on the things of the previous generation. So if you look at the history of any interesting technology, it started out simple and the children of that generation learned the simple version, but then some genius made an improvement to it and everyone follows right away and we get this ratcheting up in complexity. We walked for about a week without meeting anyone, and then one morning the Biami quietly appeared. Biami. With gestures, they seemed to be explaining that we were in the middle of their territory. They nodded in agreement, they smiled to give reassurance. We wanted them to bring down other members of their group and tried to convey this somewhat complicated message with gestures. M. M. I think. M. Lalu. Ella. Lalu na. Bikaru ikan. Bikaru ikan. Lalu bikam. Bikaru ikan. Bikaru ikan. Bikaru ina ulo. Ikan. 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 Dah yuk. Oh, bikaru ikan. Ya la, ya la, ya la. Lalu, lalu. Ya la, ya la. Bikaru. Bikaru. Iko, iko, iko. Although our two societies were so different and had never come into contact before this moment, it seemed that many of our gestures did have the same meaning. These nods and smiles, frowns and head shakes, were surely not mere conventions, but deep in us. It seemed that they used the same name for their rivers as the tribesmen who were with us, and their leader counted them for us. To do that, he used a quite different category of gesture, not a deep-seated one like a nod or a smile, but a conventional one that has been learned. And here, our cultural backgrounds divided us. He used the fingers of one hand for numbers up to five. Above five, the Biami clearly have their own individual code. It's easy enough to follow it in sequence like this, but the Biami also use these gestures individually, in bargaining, for example. And then how would we know that this gesture meant eight? Or this one, nine. But before he got to eleven, he used two of those facial expressions that were immediately understandable to us both. Bafflement, because we got the name slightly wrong, and amusement at our stupidity.
The extreme way to protect yourself against change and keep total order in the face of awkward questions is to do it the way they do it in Eastern communities, where, say, Buddhism is a way of life. In that case, you're not bothered by questions because you're not looking for answers. Basically, all the answers of Buddhist needs were found over 2,000 years ago. Their explanation of the universe is set in theological concrete. And in any case, it's a universe that doesn't change, so there's no need to go looking for change in it.